Hello, this is the Tour Eternity Delphi Council debriefings where the storm has a name. We are your hosts, Lehman, Jay, and Mark. And today we will be talking about the Cyber Papacy Cosm cards. Um, one through ten we should get through. Before that, we got a email, and so we want to read that and to remind everybody, or if this is the first time you're either watching or listening, that you can email us at torgdcd at gmail.com. Send us your emails. We will read them. If there's questions, we'll answer questions. If there's comments, we might comment back. Um, but we do very much encourage you all, the uh, listeners and viewers, to uh, tell us what you think. So this one is called Cosm Card Reviews. So very on topic. And this is by Siskoid. So Siskoid. Um, I'm really liking your episodes of Cosm Cards, their value and usefulness, so let me throw in a couple of related questions your way. The first is perhaps for Jay specifically, since he crafts a lot of his own Cosm Cards for public consumption at the Infiniverse Exchange. I use them all, great stuff. My question is, what inspires Jay's boosters and therefore might inspire any Game Master to add Cosm Cards of their own, making to their stacks. Is it a perceived lack of already available effects, color and style of the Cosm, getting more variety into the deck, or what? And have other hosts experimented with this as well? I find that sometimes with long stays in a single Cosm, the decks can recycle relatively quickly, even with the booster in there. Now that the Law of Vengeance is no more, for example, we're expected to throw out a couple of Pan Pacifica cards related to that. The deck has gotten thinner. It's a shame that we don't have cards relating to the Law of relativ Relativity to replace them. How have you handled this key change in the game world? Um, so, Jay, what are your th uh, reasonings, I guess the, the first reasonings for crafting your own Cosm cards, which anybody can find on the Infiniverse Exchange on yeah, drive Through uh, RPG? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess exactly what you said in the second part there, that I found running games that we were just cycling through the same 10 cards over and over and this was back when uh there was like the ulysses forums were up and i remember asking hey could, does someone want to make more cosm cards and usually the way these things work for me is i get an idea for one or two of them um i think what started the whole thing off was thinking of the an arcane uh power i can't remember what i called it now but it's one of the aisle cards where you can use one of your magic ads as, to count as a skill and i just walking home from work you would pop into my head like yeah that's a cool idea It'd be nice if someone could make a card and so i asked people like who could do this and i even made a list of 10 aisle cards um and no one could or would and they said why don't you do it and i'm like i don't know how to do it I, you know uh so eventually i just sort of went and figured things out and as you can see because i still usually have the older versions of the cards available they were really rough <laughs> at first and have steadily gotten better and better um but yeah it's usually like the inspiration just comes sometimes there's a bit of a theme to it like the cyber papacy cards for instance i use the seven deadly sins uh for the core earth cards i used action movie quotes uh you know so it and the thing is sometimes you can kind of see like for Nile or even Pan Pacifica, I might have only really had six good ideas and the rest are kind of filler. Uh, so the early ones, it's like all good stuff. But I try to cover a little bit of everything and I try to avoid uh, cards that only work for one person, like ones that are only for spellcasters or that sort of thing, or at least give a provision to redraw them. Because one of the things, like, one of the truths I've taken from my game is that the worst kind of Cosm card is the Cosm card that sits in your hand and doesn't get played. Mm -hmm. So I want to make them all playable. Don't always succeed. Uh, but I do also have an optional rule in my home game where they can make a reality rule and potentially draw multiple cards and choose which one they want so they can kind of tailor it a bit. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just looking 
uh, for things like that. And then sometimes just for fun, like the festive ones are, you know, just kind of silly. I have thought in the future of doing Warzone cards, like uh, West Coast Ooh. would be all more like Ghost Clan, Edinos, mm -hmm. and sort of come up with tailored decks using, like currently there's 30 cards available for each Cosm if you're including mine. And if I made new ones, maybe there's 40. So that would probably be a bit too much. You do want to have some of them kind of coming up again and again, because we mentioned with Nile last week, suddenly comes up a lot, you know, so you want that to happen. So I would probably, I've been sort of thinking of curating lists uh, of which Cosm cards to use in which areas of each realm and maybe make a Godnet one. So there's just no time these days, though. <laughs> so, I uh, yeah, there's not really a particular inspiration i just sort of think of things that were lacking that i thought were cool and then kind of build around from there mark do you have anything about the uh, cosm cards yeah so um i use the rule of two to help i don't really do cosm cards like jay does jay Jay builds the cards out, and that's that's his his shtick and what he does with Infiniverse Exchange, and that's his thing, and he does it really well. Um, I, I haven't I haven't taken on that aspect, but what I've done is used the rule of two in the idea of uh, when I do a mission or I'm I'm trying to to run a mission, I like to to try and include because Torg to me Torg Eternity the 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 wonder of Torg Eternity is the the meshing of two dissimilar things together, like Isle and Cyber Papacy, and throwing those into the mix and seeing what comes out of that. And I like the idea of what are those co how do those Cosm cards? Because you've got if you put the rule of two together, where you have two Cosms, now you have forty Cosm cards if you're using all twenty for each of the two decks, sixty if you're using all of Jays, and that are that are available in that to throw out there plus how do those interact with the world laws and when you take you know like in that example cyber papacy world laws with eilish cosm cards how do those interact is there is there any flavoring or or can you can you be creative with how you know you know for example or living land like like suddenly you know you get instead of a t-rex shows up what you know if you've got living land and cyber papacy melded together instead of a t-rex could you have some other thing that's more cyber papacy show up to to play off of that and so i like to take the cosm cards with the rule of two and and change them that way um it wonders are a great example in the living land where you can you can do anything you want with wonders and when you mash the two realities together you can make really unique wonders if you use the world laws from both realities to feed into, you know, something like that. But, you know, it's, you mentioned, Siskoid, you mentioned removing cards or that we're supposed to remove cards. Well, yeah, you, you could remove them or, because it's your Cosm, you could keep them. And you could do it however you want. As an example, in Pan Pacifica, I really like the Contagion. And... I like the the themes and the way that that plays out within the realm of what Pan Pacifica is, and I think that that you can have some really cool storylines if you keep that in the mix. I, I intend at some point, if I get enough time and and inclination and whatnot, to do something along the lines of exploring the what if of how the cure came about, right? And the what if of what happens. You know, Taiwan essentially is containment right now right there the contagion's all on taiwan well what happens it, how does you know what happens if suddenly the contagion is no longer contained on taiwan how does that even happen right and do play that storyline out or even i think longer term what would happen if the contagion mutated and the cure that kanawa has for this that's gotten it you know tamped down suddenly becomes obsolete because now we've got you know Kamigaz type 2 or whatever you want to call it and now you've got this other thing out there that Kanawa is scrambling around like everybody else and it, how does that even play out so I think you can do it how you want to do it in your Cosmverse because it, it's your Cosmverse um, if you don't want to throw them out don't um, 
to Jay's point, you know, when he was talking about doing the cards and nobody wanted to do the cards or would do the cards and somebody said to him, well, why don't you do the cards? And he said, well, I don't know how to do that. Um, none of us knew how to do that when we started. I mean, my first, my first stab at it was, was rooting out a Rorsch and I threw that up on, cause I wanted to do missions. I like missions, the adventures and adding content with make the missions something that was unique. And so I started putting threats that, because I thought there weren't enough threats. So I started building threats or other things that you could reuse. Just do it. Just go jump in there and do it. The first one or two that you do, yeah, they're going to be rough around the edges. But just jump in there and do it. And that's how you learn how to do it. Nobody's going to, you know, oh, that's so awful. You're no, no. It's just, you just learn that way. Um, and I, I, that goes into the too many cards thing that Jay was like, I, you know, if there's 60 cards out there, you don't have to use them all. You can pick and choose, and the ones you don't like, pull them out. There are cards that I don't like that I don't want to try and figure out how to put into the game, so I pull them out so they don't come up. But if you like so other cards, like if, you, if you're if you all about dino attacks and you want to have a heavy dino, double the number of dino attacks in there, that's fine too. D d nothing says you don't have to do that. You can't do that because it's your Cosm first. Yeah, um, to, to add with that for myself, I haven't made Cosm cards for uh, the Cosms that ex exist in Torg Eternity. Um, I made a... My, my, my first project was just, in the Infiniverse, was just some arc archetypes. But then my, my second one was much larger... Uh, Paraverse, which is kind of my own Cosmverse that I introduced, which was kind of a bridge between classic Torg and Torg Eternity, and based off of my home game, my home campaign, in which the uh, Azteca, or the Aztec Empire, which I named Azteca, so there wouldn't be a Nile Empire and an Aztec Empire. So Azteca uh, actually came to being because my Storm Knights uh, failed that mission, that book. <laughs> and so I made up the, at that time it was 10 Cosm cards, so I made up 10 Azteca Cosm cards. Um, other times, like, because I actually have a, uh, my... Maritika ha is actually its own thing that, again, is more classic Torg, where it is Living Land and huh. Nile Empire. I took a specific five from Nile Empire and a specific five from Living Land um, for, for that. Um, but I, I would agree completely with Mark that with, uh, Pan with the Pan Pacifica booster, we have, like, now 25 cards i think we took the we ha had 10 we added 10 but yeah. then instead of it having should be the right five amount. um instead of adding the five destiny cards we did the the quote unquote replacement cards that were both uh taking away the law of vengeance cards as well as the infection cards we didn't take away the um like the geon like the actual Jiangji and the Yokai, those mutation cards. The mutation, yeah. Th those stayed in there. Um, to to do kind of a reversal of what Mark said in in that home campaign, I did the uh, the other thing that succeeded was the miracle of Sacramento, I think it was, and so Kanawa had established an area in on the uh, the west coast of the United States. And that one specifically did not have infected. So I took away the infected from there. When I had my, when my Storm Knights played in that area, there were no infected cards. And when they mm -hmm. played in uh, the, the Pan Pacifica area, then there was. And as Mark pointed out, Taiwan is filled with infected, filled with um, the, the different mutations and stuff. So those cards could be ones that you bring in when you're in those areas and you remove when you're out. And the last thing I uh, want to, I guess, suggest or offer is think about the, the law of acquisition. Acquisition is usually getting something. And the way that the law is written, it's more of an exchange of something. So just change the law of acquisition a little bit and have... Uh, Kanawa 
you know the the darkness device and the the high lord bring just bring in new laws or swap out laws where needed um the 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 law of i think it was rationality was in order to like help stave off a rorsch a little bit but maybe they only need them in these certain stale zones and in these other ones the law of vengeance is more appropriate so i would go for in my own cosm verse having ha having one of the cool things about pan pacifica is they can change things and just do it that way so i w definitely am not one that i'm going to throw out five cards i'm going to use right. those five <laughs> cards in some some way shape or, or form if, if they they fit the the story that i'm telling so hopefully that gives you some food for thought and we do thank you for writing in and again do write us at torg dcd oh. at I did. Sorry, I did remember one thing because he did mention about inspiration, and I've been looking ah. at this while we're talking. Uh, I did make whoops, <laughs> this one specifically the lust card, specifically because some of my players are just addicted to constantly playing the romance card, <laughs> even when it is not appropriate, and just to give me grief. So I specifically went out of my way to make a Cosm card for them to spend romances on, to get rid of them, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so that was some inspiration there. And I think also um, Cisco did himself recently release some cards as well in the Infiniverse Exchange. Ah, okay. So, so yes, do, do check, check out the Infiniverse Exchange. There's a lot of stuff on there that I think is pretty good. Um, th there is always the thing of what might be good for a specific table or a, a group of different tables appropriate there don't necessarily are just widely wanted or, or needed on the grand uh, scheme of, you know, a global production. So th the Infiniverse, I think, is a great place for that. Like, I would not expect everybody to play in my... Uh, Cosmverse, but some people want something that doesn't have the Delphi Council, so there is an option mm -hmm. for for those people and stuff. So, and for those of you who shop on the Infiniverse Exchange and you get the stuff that is on Drive Through RPG, I highly recommend that you leave feedback on the stuff that you've downloaded. Okay, nope, it. I don't know what it is, but people, generally speaking, don't, and you're doing you're doing your fellow gamers a disservice by not leaving something on the stuff that you've downloaded whether you liked it didn't like it whatever um because as an author i can tell you we read all of the stuff mm -hmm. that people leave so if you're like i liked this part and i didn't like this the things that you didn't like we would like to know so that we can change them otherwise we're going to keep doing it that way so if you leave feedback, people are reading it, and it's the, the, the cheapest and easiest way to say thank you to somebody who's written something you liked. Mm -hmm. Just go in there and leave a sentence, loved it, this is great stuff, you won't be, you won't be dissatisfied, period, done, boom. So leave, leave feedback. Okay, so let's move into the Cosm cards for uh, Cyber Papacy. So number one is God in the Machine. Play when using technology connected to the Godnet, most machines in the Cyber Papacy, even appliances. The interaction may draw the authorities. The Storm Knights gain one to three possibilities based on the severity of the response. Game Master's Call. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on God and the Machine? It's a very good card. It reinforces the, the toaster is listening uh, lines from Cyber Papacy. And it does say may, so it doesn't necessarily have to force something. And sometimes there might be nothing coming and the players get so paranoid, they screw themselves over. And even that's worth a possibility, right? Um, but yeah, it is one of those things where it is a variable amount of possibilities. So you have a lot of freedom as GM, what you want to do. You could have Cygoils flying up above and watching them, but not interfering directly. You could have church police show up 20 minutes later and then slowly start trying to follow them and figure out where they are. You could have an in inspector, you know, tailing them. There's, or you could just have a host slam down 
you know, crush their car and just start blasting. It's kind of up to you. Uh, so you can really tailor it to what's going on because, like, dino attack, it's always a dinosaur and they're rarely subtle, but this could just be someone following you, mm -hmm. you know? Mark, your thoughts on God and the Machine? Yeah, this is this is like a lot of the other ones that we've gotten that give you a one to three possibilities on based on whatever you encounter, the difficulty they're in. And and credit to, to Liam and for his approach on that one. It's not necessarily what you throw at them as it is how hard your your Storm Knights have to struggle against what you throw at them. And I love that that concept. That was a paradigm shift for me on these cards. Thank you, Liam. Um <laughs> Because I was always going, okay, well, this should be a three possibility challenge for them. And it wasn't taking into account, well, where are they at? Um, so, yeah. I, but it's a good card. It's it's the dino attack of the cyber papacy. That kind can of. Be, that and can the be other stuff, right. <laughs> Yo, it sure can, but it, the toaster <laughs> is listening. Yeah. No, I, I like this one, as Jay said, because it can be a dino attack, but it can be just some guy finds out your information three weeks later <laughs> you know it, it just be whatever um the, there's there will be a response at some point but you as the game master get to completely determine what that response is so I or, or problems cool. hacking something if you're running through the god net you get you know mm -hmm. you now you're Lehman will hate this, but now you got to run a chase through the god net because jack priests <laughs> are coming after you or something like that they, that they wouldn't otherwise and they do fly Okay, let's move on to number two, La Resistance. The resistance comes to the hero's aid. This may bring allies to fight, distract church police from pursuing the Storm Knights, or provide information, items, or other resources to the team. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on La Resistance? This is a very good card. It uh, is very open-ended for the players this time. Uh, gives them a lot of options that they can do, but there is always the potential danger that this will burn your connection with the resistance, depending on what you do afterwards. Because if you use this to get to one of their safe houses and you lead a bunch of church police there and get a bunch of resistance members killed, that will probably have some kind of ripple effect later. So just keep in mind, they're helping you, you know, so you might need to help them back. Mark, your thoughts on La Resistance? Um, like it. It's very much a, a great Cyber Papacy flavored card simply because it's pulling out La Resistance. Um, you, you have your, you know, whoever it happens to be show up or in... I kind of look at it as, as a, a very generic whatever you need kind of card that, you know, when when it's played, hey, we need the the MacGuffin or we need we kind of don't know where the MacGuffin is or the next step. Let's play La Resistance and a contact kind of puts us gives us the piece of information we didn't have or 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 whatever. Um, it, it could be a non -com to me. It's a non combat or a combat card in that, you know, if you're getting you're getting your butt kicked by church forces and you really need some help and you drop this down, all of a sudden La Resistance shows up and tide, the tides of battle swing a little bit. Out of combat, like I said, it's a kind of whatever do you whatever you need card. Um, as long as you can make it make sense. Um, and in that sense, it feels almost like some of the, some a little bit Nile Empire in that you know when you play it it's going to feel very convenient that that this is what happens but that i mean it's a cosm card you decided you needed this thing and so you played a card so you're going to have to let that slide in the cyber papacy just because you played the card because you wanted a thing well you're going to get a thing and it's going to be very appropriate or you know it's going to be like oh well that's convenient you know whatever look this is off you go I like it too. It's it's one that it brings in the the flavor, and it's another more open ended uh, card. You can get anything from say a, a password that you needed to a full squad of you know completely armed resistance uh, members to help you fight off that host. So it's just a pretty cool Swiss Army knife card. So let's move to card number three, conjunction. Strong magical energy 
resonates through the area for the remainder of this scene. The law of heretical magic is negated. If there are no spellcasters in the group, discard and draw a new Cosm card. So, Jay, your thoughts on Conjunction? Uh, this card is kind of meh. Uh, it's, like, the best art, uh, I think, of one <laughs> of the cards. But, um, again, I don't really like it when it's just if you're a spellcaster, although this one does have the saving grace of if there's no spellcasters, get rid of it. Um, I The reason I was, like, checking stuff is I always get heretical magic in one true way mm -hmm. mixed up, like, which is which. And as far as I can tell, the law of heretical magic is just saying that if you take a mishap while casting a spell, you take an additional 1 BD shock. Now, I thought the demons popping up was part of that, but... It's not, like, in the rules for it anyways, so... All you're really dodging with this is getting more screwed over on a mishap. Uh, I mean, getting screwed over on a mishap is bad, but the odds of it happening are pretty slim, so... For this to be your Cosm card, eh... Not really the best, in my opinion. And it does... I mean, it does negate it for everybody, so if you are an entire team of mystics, then sure, <laughs> it might be good. But otherwise, uh, there's a lot better. Mark, your thoughts on conjunction? So we're going to get to card number four, which is heretical magic coming up next. But it does say that if you have a mishap while casting a spell, it summons a minor demon on the card. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it, this one, conjunction, it, it's, you know, strong magical energy resonate through the air, the remainder of the scene. I, to me, if you're going to play this card, you need to play this at the beginning of a scene, not at the end of the scene. Um, I, I might, I might tell you, you can't play it at the end of the scene because then it shows up and it goes away. Um, it, but I don't know why I would do that necessarily because this is like a good for the players card. Yeah. <laughs> um, so from the standpoint of a game master, you might want to make sure that the, the players know it's only good for this, the length of the scene they're in. And if you're at the end of the scene and they, they're getting ready to drop it down because they think it's, you might want to not be a, a, a dick and tell them, yep, you played it. Okay, let's do the card thing. Scene's over. And they're <laughs> like, well, hey, wait a minute. Because now they're out of a Cosm card for the act. Uh, I do like the fact, and I think I, I may have to go back and figure out which cards to do this on. But I love the idea that this says if there are no spellcasters in the group, discard it and get a new Cosm card. Because as Jay pointed out earlier... It sucks to have a Cosm card in your hand and you know I'm never going to play this. There, there is absolutely zero opportunity to play this with the group that's here in the mission that we're on. Why do I this? Okay. So I like the card other than the, that fact because it does zero out heretical magic, which sucks if you're a spellcaster. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is not a bad card. It's not a great card. Just it's an okay card. Yeah, I've... I agree with everything that's been stated. Um, it is also kind of a weird thing because I think um, a, a certain realities have more of the cards that are alternately discard this card and draw a new card, which is good when they're a little niche like this. But then, as the email stated, you even have less cards in your rotation. So it's kind of a, it's a good that it's there, but I like the solid cards that anybody can use because then you don't have to worry about discarding. So that's the, that's kind of the, the main downside. It's niche. Yes, you can draw a new card that's good, but then by doing so, you're cycling through your 20 cards and now you only have your 19 cards. And then if you're mm -hmm. looking at our next card, which is also one, then you might go down another card and only have 18 <laughs> cards. So let's move on to card number four. As Mark said, it is Heretical Magic, um, which also the conjunction says the law of heretical magic is negated. So as a game master and or a table, you're going to have to look at the world law of heretical magic and this Cosm card of heretical magic and determine <laughs> does this conjunction nullify both or only one <laughs> so um, heretical magic play immediately when drawn 
The first player character who rolls a mishap while casting a spell summons a minor demon. See toward eternity. All Storm Knights gain two possibilities after the demon is defeated. If there are no spellcasters in the group, discard and draw a new Cosm card. So, Jay, Heretical Magic, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean... Maybe it's Tharkold I'm thinking of, but I could have sworn there was something in the text in the rule book about demons as Sarkul well. But... does have it, and then later yeah. the, I, I know for a fact, later the Cosm card was added because people were forgetting to have the Techno Demon show up on a mishap. Right. So, but I guess, yeah, um, unfortunate naming, this is okay. I mean, it's, again, it gets ignored if you don't have any spell casters, so that's fine. It only targets player characters, so... That's unlike some of the Isle ones, which will equally affect anyone. Uh, this only uh, gets the players. As far as what Lehman was saying earlier, I would probably personally rule if someone played Conjunction, you would ignore the effects of this for that scene. And then it would still be active. Like, it wouldn't cancel it completely. It would just... While the Conjunction is going on, then... Malrose. So this is just Love sitting her. there in the, in the yeah. background waiting. waiting. <laughs> get, yeah. get, getting angrier and angrier. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's okay. Um, it's a fairly decent possibilities. Demon, minor demons are dangerous if they go first, but if they go second, they're not that tough. Uh, as a GM, though, it depends on how you introduce the demon. Because if it just appears in a ball of fire in front of them is very different than if it possesses a kid uh, over there, right? So that keep in mind uh, where your how your adventure is going and how and like any of these uh, cards that adds enemies, how much time you want them to spend on it. But it is always going to give each person two possibilities, so you probably want to make them work for it. Mark, your thoughts on heretical magic. Um, so yes, this absolutely by, if you want to play it, rules is written, says that, that this is for player characters. And it also says that if you don't have a spell caster in your group, you should discard it and draw a new Cosm card. Um, however, if you wanted to modify this a little bit and just like some other Cosm cards affect characters, any, anybody, um, if you wanted to allow it to affect anyone instead of just player characters, Storm Knights, then you could just let this be in play because the players never know when they're going to run into a spellcasting NPC. And if you're running into a spellcasting NPC, because it doesn't say only... I mean, if you keep it as a player character, it's only the good guys. If you open it up to everybody, then when they are attacked by... You know, a white witch or uh, or a demon or somebody what else. What are they who's... doing to be attacked by a white witch? <laughs> they might be uh, using alternative tech. forces. <laughs> yeah, you never know. But suddenly, someone else is casting spells against them, and they mishap, and now there's a demon showing up. I mean, this could be a more interesting card because it's gonna. There's no way to dispel it. Uh, you can you can mute it for a scene with. Uh, conjunction right but it, it just it's there play immediately boom it's on the tabletop for the rest of the act so it could make life much more spicy yeah i i tend to as much as i've talked about you know changing dino attack and having them be um something if your your game is limited on time to you know, wrap it up in a, a different encounter or something like that. The the demon summoning ones I always bring up, and I've had sometimes a couple of these <laughs> pop up at one time. Where like in in Tharkold, what we just uh, mentioned, there is the rule, and then there is the card. And I had somebody who had the card, so I used that one time. But then they did it normally, so they actually summoned two techno demons in that one. So. <laughs> It was a very fun fight for me as a game master. But, no, I, I, I kind of like it. It does have the discard and draw a new card, which I'm uh, 
hem and hawing over just because it, it does reduce it, but I, I am glad that if you don't have it, so maybe I'd do Mark's thing where I would just allow, if, if I knew other things coming up had magic, that I would be like, okay guys, go ahead and just still still use this. It could come into play, and they're still going to get a couple of possibilities because if the enemy summon that demon, that demon's not necessarily only going to attack that enemy, so that could be fun as well. Um, so let's move on to card number five, Malrose Wrath. Play when your hero or an ally fails a casting test with magic or miracles. So this is both magic or miracles. The uh, caster suffers four shock instead of the usual two. All other allies within 20 meters suffer two shock. All of those affected gain one possibility. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on Malrose Wrath? Notable in that it, this one does not allow you to discard it and draw a new one. So, odds are fairly good that you will have at least a spellcaster or miracle worker, or at least be chumming around with one in a Cyber Papacy adventure, but it's not guaranteed. So this could very much be a dead card because it is just hero or ally. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect cyber papal forces. So um, this is actually the card I was thinking of when Mark was talking about your buddies casting stuff and everything. But uh, this is probably one I would more change to that. But I guess it doesn't make sense then because it is Malrose Wrath. This is probably the card I would be most likely to cut just altogether out of the deck unless I had like an all-caster party or mixture of the two, because it's very likely, you know, at least one caster or miracle worker in the party. Otherwise, I'd probably cut it because it's just dead a dead card in most people's hands. Mark, your thoughts on Malrose Wrath? Eh, it's, it's kind of a... I mean, it's not a tremendous card. It's only going to get you a possibility. Um or everybody affected a possibility, assuming anyone is affected. Um, it, it affects your side only, but as the name says, Malrose Wrath, right? And and I think it's I think it's appropriate, and you need to put a little flavor into it when it when it occur, when it's triggered. Um, I would like to see it a little more juicy as far as the effect goes, because mm -hmm. honestly. Four shocks, not that bad. Two shock, I mean, you just pushed the fatigue button. If it was like a wave that, that triggered fatigue, that might be more appropriate given, you know, your dwarf in in armor that has fatigue as a, as a feature. Now he's taken more, you know, it, it affects people mm -hmm. a little bit different. I mean, I, I might all go all the way up to a wound to the caster and a BD of shock to everybody else just to be... And maybe bump it one to two possibilities. I don't know. It's just it's not that great a card. So you get one you get one possibility out of it, so, but it doesn't do that much either. So I guess you know balance. Sure, it's just meh. Um, you the biggest thing though is you got to remember you have this because it isn't a play immediately. It's not on the table and then gets triggered when something happens. You have to play it when you or your ally fails a casting test, which means you have to remember you have it in your hand and somebody, somebody goes, oh, I'm just going to take the shock and you're in the heat of battle and you're planning your steps and you go next and then you forget about it and you know you didn't get to play it and trigger that. Everybody's like, well, we could have taken two shock. That's easy. And then we get a possibility. And you forgot. Eh. I, I, I agree with Mark. I wish this had a little more bite and I would rather it have two possibilities with that more bite whether it's a uh, i would even went further and say that the the caster takes two wounds and everybody else takes a wound who gets two possibilities <laughs> <laughs> i'd be hey let's do that so, i'm so, good so rough. like that yeah yeah but I, I, again make it so two, two and four shock to me isn't much at all there's so many different ways to negate that wounds are a little bit harder or even like a make some roll or take a wound and then get you know two possibilities or something or reality you know, a, check a, a or bd with sh a shock but on the explosion you take a wound you know just something a little more meaty but otherwise it's it's decent but it's not 
it's not one that like as a player or as a game master if i see i'm either like yeah as a player or he he as a game master you know <laughs> right. it's just like oh, okay card <laughs> was played uh, so let's move on to card six heightened <clears throat> paranoia play in a populated area the people there are on high alert intimidation persuasion and streetwise tests are hard which is a negative four penalty until a glory card is played in that area a mishap when using any of these skills alerts the church police all players gain one possibility so jay what are your thoughts on heightened paranoia my players love playing this card. They play it immediately as soon as we start. They don't care about the possibility. <laughs> they just want to cause each other problems. So usually it'll be as soon as someone goes to talk to somebody. <laughs> it's like, hey, we need some information. Bam, I'm in paranoia. And he's like, why? You're did you calling do this? me out, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's it's been a lot of fun. Um it does only give one possibility and it's kind of weird because it remains until a glory. So it's way longer lasting than a lot of other cards for only one possibility. But I mean, the odds are good. There will be a glory at some point, whether you're there or not, I guess is the real question, but I like it. It's very flavorful and the shenanigans make it, even if it's not a huge mechanical reward, it's still a fun card to play for players and GMs. So, Mark, your thoughts on Heightened Paranoia. I love this card. This is, in my opinion, this is one of the most flavorful uh, Cyber Papacy cards going, and the art on this one is really good, too. I love this card because it makes... You're, the majority of what goes on in the cyber papacy is snoop and poop and you have to find stuff and figure things out and there's a lot of interaction and this makes the face job so much harder and i it's just it's a fantastic card and it persists until glory gets there which is another thing that i love about this um i 100 percent think this ought to be a two possibility card um, just because of the, even if let's say you played it and then the very first roll you got a glory off and, and it goes away, that's fine. But the 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 angst and consternation that the party is going to go through, just thinking about what could be with this minus four on all these skills that you've just jacked up, and uh, you know the church police are looking for you. I would have more street beater patrols out i would have more drones out they see more cameras whirring and picking up on them and paying i mean just everything going on it's heightened paranoia right people don't want to talk to them i.e the minus four play it up it's fantastic and i might even haven't but i might even let this persist across acts if they hadn't gotten a glory um you might have to think about if you're going to do that maybe not having it when they do another act the next act not having it in the cosm deck to be pulled out or if you want to really jack them up have it in there and if it comes More. out again <laughs> stack because now they got minus eight take think about how hard that would be oh my gosh that would be just mind-numbing but it'd be fantastic so I, I like this card, as I was uh, alluding to with Jay. I have played this at the moment that we got into a highly populated <laughs> area in which yes, the people you already did not really like the idea of these outsiders coming in and then played it to give us the, the negative four when I don't really think we have any face, like totally face <laughs> characters Nope. Like I, my character has persuasion. It might be. I think I actually bought my charisma up to a seven, and then I might have like a Ooh. point or two <laughs> in persuasion, and I became the face who had to deal with my own card. But it wasn't like played that way. But no, th this is a, a great thing. Um, the the group on Wednesday, uh, the stream. We love playing these at the absolute quote unquote wrong time the uh it's kind of like the <laughs> tribalism card in, in living land where we played when we met outsiders that we needed we absolutely needed to <laughs> convince them not to go that way but to go this other way you know it just 
adds to the tension. I think uh, it, it brings out that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's move on to card number seven, Denounced. A non-player character is mistrustful of another player character. He watches closely and is suspicious of everything. Unless convinced otherwise by the end of the scene, he betrays, denounces, or uh, reports the accused. Your hero and the targeted Storm Knight gain two possibilities. So, Jay, your thoughts on Denounced? I like it. It's kind of in the same uh, area as the heightened paranoia is, but just with one person. Now, I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific non-player character. Um, much like a lot of the Pan Pacific uh, Law of Intrigue kind of gives the GM carte blanche to maybe add an NPC if there wasn't one already. But usually a player will play this when there's a strong NPC that's been introduced in an adventure. So they'll be expecting that person. And most of the time it should be that person. But every once in a while you hit them with the old Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> you know, someone totally different. Um, it's good because it's also more flavorful. It's not like, oh, you're going to be attacked. It's good that they will denounce you. And you do have a chance to prove yourself to them. And so hopefully if you, whatever mission you're on, if you do it well and you take this NPC's feelings into account... It won't be an issue, but it might be. But it's uh, decent possibilities, too. It's like a little bit of everything. So, Mark, your thoughts on Denounced? I like this card, too. Uh, this is this is a great... This is another one that's got a lot of cyber papacy feel to it because heightened paranoia kind of leads into Denounced, right? It doesn't say who, though, which character is which character the NPC is mistrustful of. It's kind of vague. Uh, so you can GMs, you can allow the player who's playing it to, to indicate, or they just play it and you say, okay, I got this covered. And now you're dictating, but keep in mind that you're dictating who's going to get the possibilities at that point. So you have to kind of, do you want to let the player say, well, I want this to be the, 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 the dynamic going on. Cause they might think, they might think that they have a way to, to mitigate that and they've thought of, you know, this this person's going to announce this person and I'm going to help them with this. And then we get two possibilities and it doesn't really affect us. Boom. If you're handing out possibilities, they need to have – it needs to have an effect. It can't be just a here's a card. Give me three possibilities. I mean sometimes it works out like that. But most of the time they need to – it needs to have a game effect. So I would almost always dictate – where it goes or or if they i would like it to go this way we say okay just put that on the table and we'll see how this plays out and now you've got this element of i don't know how this is going in the air which always makes players a little antsy because the unknown they, they've got the you know, they know what they can do and they've got this plan but now there's this element of unknown in there and maybe you know that they're getting ready to meet the perfect npc to that, that has a reason to betray them, but could also go the other way and is kind of there to do the whole, you got to convince them, etc. cetera. Um, the two possibilities on this one, I kind of would like to see denounced and, uh, and uh, heightened paranoia switch as far as the value, because this is just really, it's one, it's one player. You got to roll. If you got a good, if, if it happens to be the, the face that gets it, or you got a good persuasion or whatever, you make a good roll, and boom, you got the possibilities. No big deal. So, eh. Yeah, I I tend to agree with, with both of you. The only thing that I'll add or, or not really even add, just enforce, is I do like that the uh, there's a time limit. It's a slow burn card. It's not just a they denounce you. It's a there's buildup. So, you, as you both were saying you don't have to say who it is that's going to denounce you but you might as a game master just have somebody watch and anytime somebody makes an off comment against the cyber papacy or whatever which know, they will the, you know they're like <laughs> you know they're they're marking it down and they're getting ready to send their re report in and you know so so the denouncing could happen without the players knowing who did it 
And if they are like, hey, wait, we didn't have time to, uh, you know, convince them otherwise, you could bring out your whole list as a game master of these are all the things that you did and <laughs> said, you know, to to get you that way. So that's what, you know, all, if you would have just had a different way of approaching things. You knew the card was in play. Um, so this could be, you know, I don't know if you think it's like a sneaky game master trick, but I think it's pretty much written in black and white on the card. So. <laughs> Oh, moving on to card number eight, Wanted. Play after committing a crime against the cyber church, including battle against church forces. The church police send a strike team to attack sometime this act. All Storm Knights involve game one to three possibilities after the strike team is repulsed, depending on the strength of the strike team. So, Jay, your thoughts on Wanted. I mean, this is another one of those dino attack style cards, except it has a trigger, uh, so that trigger has to happen, but the players are in very much control of the said trigger, so if they want it to happen, it will happen. Um, and committing crimes against the Cyber Papacy is almost guaranteed in every adventure in the Cyber Papacy, but I have had players just start like smashing up stores and stuff just to play this um <clears throat> again like like any of these it's like how long is it gonna take to do the fight but it is during the act so it could happen at any point and because information travels slowly in the cyber papacy or rather it travels quickly and then sits in a folder in Babel central <laughs> for a long time until someone looks at it uh you know so they might not get to it right away, uh, but it, they might just end up being reinforcements to something the other the players are already doing. It could even be something like if they're planning on sneaking into a spot that these reinforcements show up and just warn everybody that it's coming. You know, there's a lot you can do. So it's pretty much the average one of those cards. Mark, your thoughts on Wanted? Uh, so this one is a fresh wound for me because it came up last night uh, on the stream. It, and it, it actually, it was, <laughs> Jay says it, 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 Jay's absolutely correct in that, that data travels quickly and then percolates slowly <laughs> into action. Because they have to print that out, put it in a folder, and then it sits in the bottom, it gets piled up, and then that gets carried over to another monk who picks them up and then enters them back into the system for the people who have to act on them. And then they do stuff with it once they get it, it gets through their work queue. So yeah, the stuff sifts slowly unless it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And last night, um, without giving the game away, somebody walked into an encounter with a named NPC and a church official and just, cast lightning bolt and fried the church official out of hand and then someone said i think a crime against the church has just been committed <laughs> which it had and there was a scout drone in the air which was recording everything and so at a later time in the middle of split the party some people were in the god net and some people weren't some jack priests showed up with in the god net with a host overhead and so everybody was engaged and it was a it was a big deal um, because, you know, when you've got heretical magic, they call out the strike team that just like, we got to go deal with that right now. And so they did. It, it wanted is a, it is a dino attack card, but it is, and as stated, it's got a trigger, but if you do it right, it's got a really nice flavor to it. And it's a great cyber papacy card purely because you, you, it's a cause and effect. You did a thing and a thing happened because you did a thing. Not just like Dino Attack in the Living Land is just up oh, dinosaur, right? It, here, you committed a crime against the church, and now some people are here to exact the the retribution for that. So, something that you should, should you don't have to do this, but it's probably a good idea to keep the strike team that's deployed in line with the crime you're saying they're responding to so you know you're not going to have you know four cygoils and a host show up when somebody's jaywalking but you know if they're committing a smash and grab you know one street beater per storm night is not going to show up for that so you know yeah i i agree this is uh 
dino attack with a trigger and a, a little more flexibility, I think. Um, it's, been, it's been a while since we actually did dino attack, but I think even though we said um, we would prefer to just put it in the act when we want, the, the language in it might not be as might not be as clear as this one. So this one does give you the whole act as a game master to figure that stuff out, and it is a trigger instead of just a, uh, a surprise. Moving on to number nine, mandatory upgrade. An ill time upgrade or glitch causes a piece of Tech 26 technology to malfunction and fail for the remainder of the scene. If the item belonged to an ally, your Stormite and targets gain one to three possibilities based on the severity of the loss. So, uh, Jay, your thoughts on mandatory upgrade? So at first, this can seem like it's not that good because same situation. We might not have any Tech 26 gear. We are in the Cyber Papacy. None of us are Cyber Papacy, but I can't discard it. But the thing is, it does say any uh, character. So like a piece. So on anyone. Uh, so this can affect like Cyber Papacy agents, that Inquisitor that's chasing you. Um, <clears throat> their car, you know, whatever, right? Um, so this is probably almost always going to be useful in the Cyber Papacy, unless you're, like, way out in the boonies fighting, like, demon cultists or something like that. It's almost always going to be good. Um, and it's kind of like a setback, essentially, because it's just cause, cause a glitch or an upgrade. There's a malfunction of some kind. And it keeps failing for the rest of the scene. So if you play this on some Inquisitor's uh, arm-mounted like laser gun, then like their their god beam or whatever, it doesn't work at all for the rest of the the rest of the scene. Um, whether that reboot cybernetics miracle will work on it or not is kind of up to you. But uh, yeah, so it's pretty useful. It'll come in handy. It's almost a get out of jail free card, but not quite. Mark, your thoughts on mandatory upgrade. So let me just say that that Pierre's still going to have a problem next scene. Because this got played on Pierre's yes. power Does sword. Does anybody have Pierre Tech was... 26 stuff? Oh, yes, I do. It's my melee weapon, my main melee weapon, a sacred VWI <laughs> rapier of God. <laughs> yeah, guess what? That doesn't work. <laughs> and then due to things outside of Liam's control he could not play with us last night and we played through a scene that that got played on so no that you, you, possibilities were awarded mm -hmm. you're getting affected next scene <laughs> yeah. so hey whatever but yeah this is this is again this is another really good cyber papacy themed card that that really com to me communicates the the idea and the feel of of the cyber papacy um, this is played on either you, someone in the Storm Knights crew, or it can be played on a, on an uh, an enemy, a threat. Um, and if you play it on the threat, you don't get any possibilities because you've disabled something that the threat had, and so that's its own reward. Mm -hmm. So okay, fine. Um, if you play it on your side, if there's only one piece of Tech Twenty Six gear, as in the case of of our stream, uh, Pierre was the only one had the only thing then, okay, that's easy to determine. But if you've got multiples, um, the GM gets to call because it's, it, you know, the, the GM's going to dictate how many possibilities you get. You, you, it may be a random thing that happens. Um, that's up to you because it doesn't say who determines. The mm -hmm. player playing the card might say, well, that thing fails. Um, the only thing that I would say is, as a GM... If you're going to play this at my table, it's got to be something that has an effect. It can't be like if you're a drone jockey and you have four hard hologram emitters and you're only using one of them right now, you can't have one of the other ones that's dormant. Oh, that's an upgrade. And let me give me, give me my possibility for that. And I'll just put that in my pocket and I never use it anyway. That doesn't work. It's got to be something that has an impact on the the character that's getting an upgrade like in pierre's case he's a he's a melee striker and his main melee weapon has just been zeroed out 
that's significant because he's a, he's a heavy hitter for the team and you just took that bat out of his hand so that's going to you know you're going to get two or three possibilities for that but it's got to have an effect because if it doesn't it, there's there's just no point to me I'll add on that I almost see this as a temporary law of decay where in that one you, <laughs> you get to choose something that goes away and based on it it's one to you know three possibilities this only affects one thing um, and it's temporary but it's a similar type thing and so yeah I, I, I like law of decay I think that's very flavorful I also think that this is uh, very flavorful because um, the the person who played it on me wasn't a he he I'm playing this on you he was like hey does any you know anybody have t tech 26 oh I do hey you want you know some possibilities what to do <laughs> it destroys your tech 26 or you, you know makes it not work sure why not <laughs> just you know throw it on me see what happens okay my my main weapon goes away okay I'll figure out something to do. <laughs> See, but I like this better than than the Living Land one because it, it in the Living Land one it destroys it right, and right. it's gone. This just turns it off, which I, it, it's kind of people are reluctant to do, to do the destroys part. Even though as a as a game master, if I were to destroy your power sword, we would figure out a way that after that time frame mm -hmm. you got another power sword, right? I, that's only fair because you spent XP and built a perk around that, and that's like. In your case, that's the main concept that your character is right. built around. And if we take that away, then, you know, we've just nerfed you really hard. And that's not fair. That's not the intent of the card. No, like, like I said, it, it's like a temporary one. Yeah, I like I the temporary pretty... nature. Um, yeah. So we will get to the very last card that we'll do uh, for this episode. Number 10, Rage. Play on any character with cyberware or occult tech. She suffers an outburst of cyberpsychosis for the remainder of the scene. She adds one BD to damage results, but on a mishap, a random target is hit instead. Alternately, discard this card and draw a new one. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on Rage? Surprisingly a good card, actually, because... When you see it and it's like a cyber psychosis thing, you think, oh, this is going to hose me. But really, it's just letting you do extra damage. And if you mishap, well, this will get into those arguments again. But uh, about if you disconnect, did it happen? Do I still hit someone randomly? Uh, <laughs> you know, but um, a random target is also not necessarily always going to be a friendly target if you're wading through a bunch of cartographs, uh, you know, you're probably still going to hit one of them. Um, and it gives you the option, the option to discard it for a new one if you want. So even if you do have cyberware occultech characters, you might still not want to use it and discard it and get something else. Um, and you don't have to do it when it was drawn right away as well. So you can hang on to it for a while and be like, you know what? I don't think this co combat is where we're going here, so let's uh, swap it out. Uh, yeah, so I, I actually like this one. Whether it works on gene mods or not is the question, but I presume not. <laughs> I would say probably not. Um, yeah, I would be, yeah. Mark, your thoughts on Rage? Yay, Cyber Psychosis makes an appearance. Hooray! <laughs> um... Yeah, I like the fact that this gets both cyberware and occult tech mm -hmm. by by rule. I think there needs to be more of that in the in the cyber papacy card stuff and 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 in and in the rule set talking about cyberware in general just because that's the sec they're, they're the two sec highest they're, they're they're kissing cousins essentially. And in my opinion, occult tech ought to be everything that happens to cyberware can ha with very few exceptions can happen to occult tech and vice versa and it to me is the rule of two blending in the game and it ought to be it ought to be interwoven more and at any rate um the the reward here is not possibilities but you just juiced up you know don't make me angry you wouldn't like me when i'm angry um you know and now I'll hulk smash from whoever happens to have that that cyber arm 
uh, or whatever, whatever. Um, it doesn't say that it's a melee thing, right? So it's uh, my my your cyber ham goes crazy. My like, cyber ah! ham goes crazy, or my <laughs> cyber eye happens to really zero in real well, and I'm just you know shooting even better, hitting more vital places, blah blah blah. So it that's fantastic. And again, as Jay pointed out, the mishap um, did, did the did the attack really happen? Well, maybe it does because the cards played this time, whereas it wouldn't normally. You know, it's and well, mishaps they, don't mean disconnect. And if you're with the cyber paper correct. card, you are at tech twenty six, and if you have that, then you're probably from a you know. Not not probably. always, probably, <laughs> probably from cyber. Not PC. probably, not always, but pro you're you're correct, mm -hmm. probably. But there's edge cases. Yeah. Anyway, we're not talking about edge cases here. So random targets are not always bad, as Jay pointed out. It's random, so you could you could hit you know a different Cardigus, or you could hit. The, it's not good either because you might have been like, I really need to, to degrade the big boss, and so I'm the heavy hitter, and I'm going at the big boss, and now I'm shooting this one mook, <laughs> and I just obliterate this this <laughs> one mook. Whereas I, you know, I need I need to do four wounds to the boss, and I vaporized the street beater over here or whatever. So that's you know that yeah, that's still bad, but keep in mind. You get to make the decision on what the random target is. So it could be a power supply that's really important. It could be the computer you're trying to get data out of. Uh, it could be a node. It could be a camera. It could be, you know, knocking down a street light that suddenly makes it difficult, more difficult to run those chases or get away or whatever. So you could add whatever target you want in there as the GM and, and, you know, randomly roll your die and say, well, it could hit this, this, or this, or these guys over here. And you roll, oh, look, it did this thing over here. So it, it could be fun. As much as our group, and Mark, you know this, loves messing with each other, one of our players had this card and asked, hey, does anybody have cyberware? And a couple of us were like, yes. And then after discussion, it was chosen to discard and draw. Because of that, you might hit one of us, which <laughs> never has stopped that group from ever uh, trap cards every time. Play oh, all day, play <laughs> all day, every day. It it actually shocked me that uh, the player didn't play that. But no, I, I you know why I think it was because everybody was low on resources and nobody and was like, well, normally you'd be like, oh well, yeah, I'll just soak and whatever or or craggle bodyguard but everybody was low on on uh, resources and knew that some stuff was coming and nobody wanted to have to, <laughs> to deal with that <laughs> just in case because those of you who are going to get taken out with this were like pierre's the heavy hitter you hit really really hard boria hits really really hard and <laughs> nobody wants to get hit really really hard <laughs> But no, I, I like it. Um, when we get to Tharkold, we will talk about the Tharkold version of this card as well as another card that I is, is similar, but I don't like it as much. But we'll leave that for that future episode. Um, having said that, that is all the 1 through 10 cards. Next uh, episode, we will deal with 11 through uh, 20. And... We again wish, uh, or would like um, to, to hear from you. Email us at torgdcd at gmail.com. We will read your emails. We will answer questions. We'll read your comments. Comment back on those. And until next time, we hope you have fun in your own Cosmverse. Bye.